On and off the water, when it comes to safety, there is no compromise. So always read and follow all manufacturer's guidelines. Today we're working on the fuel tank of my 21 foot trophy. Today's challenge rating is eight out of 10. It's day two and I'm working on the forward bulkhead. I'll start with a matte base and then add two layers of 1708. I'll begin with the smaller pieces on the port side and work my way towards the large section in the center. I have a clean workstation and my pieces are ready to go. I've measured 600 mil mixing cups with unwaxed polyester resin. Cleaned with acetone, wet it out with resin and did some simple fairing with structural putty. After yesterday, I want to avoid dry layups, so I'm hoping that a larger piece of mat will hold together better than the tabbing did. So I take my shot, not knowing how much resin to lay down first. Amazingly, it holds together well enough for me to peel it off the dry plastic, splatter it into place, and smear the fibers around. The 1708 is thirsty stuff, and it takes a lot of resin to get it translucent on the board. And this roller seems to be sucking up more resin than it lays down. I'm using the fin roller to embed the three wet layers into the structural putty and fill it. The putty behaves like modeling clay, so I'm able to sculpt the radius and remove any air bubbles. This is the port side forward bulkhead with a new fillet, a rebuilt radius, a layer of CSM and two layers of 1708 made with laminating polyester resin. This was the best glove setup I've done yet. Long kitchen gloves underneath with four pairs of disposable gloves on top. The hardest part is pulling just one. On the starboard side, I'm basically finger painting with the single CSM layer. Oh look, I forgot to raise those cables. Add that to the things I forgot list. But the sweet little three inch roller sure seems to do the trick. This first layer of 1708 lays in a lot faster by hand, but I'm running out of time on this pot of resin. Everything has started to gel, and here is where the laminating resin saves the day. If it kicks, it may not be pretty, but I can add another layer within 24 hours without having to sand it. 
as long as there's no air bubbles or voids between any of the layers, I can add the third and final layer of 1708. As I place the final layer, I'm down to the last pairs of surgical gloves that I pillaged from the pandemic emergency kit. And without my safety glasses, my eyes are burning from the fumes. I mean painful burning. If I wasn't wearing the proper respirator, I would have suffered for this without a doubt. Considering that one bad grinding session with the wrong cartridges affected my lungs for over a week. I'm determined to take PPE seriously, especially around fumes and dust. There's no way that I can manage a wet CSM layer of this size, so I decide on a dry layup. The large sleeves holds a lot of resin and the exothermic reaction released so much heat that it's cooked the large sleeve. So it's back to the three inch roller. and the fumes are off the charts, I swear I can taste the resin through my eyeballs. I'm starting to get the idea of a wet table, but I'm wasting my time with this big roller and the little dribbles of resin. I was able to lay the first 1708 wet, roll it off, and now the final layer lays in like it was meant to be. I don't recommend working by hand, but at the time I wasn't thinking clearly. The three inch roller would become the weapon of choice for everything. And I would burn over a hundred of these sleeves during the project. For sections like this, it's important to train yourself to work in a methodic pattern to guarantee you don't miss areas. Although the video could be incomplete, it does appear to show less attention to the center of the piece, and this is something that I have to manage better moving forward. Several hours later, everything is set and we shift gears towards the final stage of day two. Catalyzed at 1%, everything is covered with gel coat. And every subsequent layer will have to be sanded. As crude as this fiberglass job is, it is a major improvement, and I'm feeling a lot more confident. Once the three inch roller becomes the standard, it will set the radius angles for everything and I will no longer use the chip brush. I'm starting to appreciate the heavier gloves that can handle the solvents and protect my wrist. Like boots, jackets, fishing rods, and wrenches, my search for perfect gloves is endless, and I'll keep searching until I get it right.
here we are with the first layer of wax gel coat on the stringers and the forward bulkhead. And while this cures, I will continue to the aft bulkhead and the battery boxes. Thank you for joining me today on Project Trophy. Please like and subscribe and leave your comments below.